Don't judge a book by its cover. Everyone's got demons. Everyone's got their, their troubles that they're struggling with. If I don't get to the big leagues, I'm a failure. I think when I first started was to not eat and to work out a bunch. Hey, that was gonna get me really, really jacked. I was gonna have no fat, be really muscular, I was gonna be a man. And when I didn't see any results from not eating and working out a ton, I figured I wasn't doing it good enough. So now I need to eat less and work out more. Well, that's not working. So maybe I need to eat even less and work out even more. And that didn't work. And pretty soon, I was just withering away. There are 30 teams and maybe two guys each position. You gotta be one of the best 60 best in the world at what you're doing. And you're not gonna outwork me. I'm the first one there and the last one to leave always. If I'm gonna do something, I'm all in. When I do a school project, it was done perfect. When I need something done, I write a paper, it's done perfect. When it comes to not eating, I did it perfect. This started about junior high school. I thought the only way I was going to ever get a girlfriend is if I had a six-pack. And so that's kind of when it all started to stem into, how can I be that guy? There are times I put a stationary bike in the shower and would ride the bike, duct tape trash bags to my body, then put on like two sweatshirts, two sweatpants, and just ride in the steam. Until I was about to pass out, I would chew on ice cubes because it make me feel like eating, but all I'm doing is drinking water. No one knew. Those things started piling up. This innate desire to be perfect, this innate desire to push myself further than anybody could ever imagine, you know, is my best friend or is my worst enemy. So like this round that I'm about to do is going to be all about being soft. How far is the ball going to bounce off me? How soft can I make myself? So I, I make adjustments that way. No! No, not today. So my whole career, I have hit with everything, right? Toe taps, leg kicks, foot down early, whatever. So then it was like, well, but when you're hitting, like me being OCD myself, it's like, okay, my foot's getting down, then my hand's coming, and then, you know, and you're just like, you're trying to hit Scherzer at, you know, a game speed, and it's like, dude, you can't think about all that stuff. You gotta like a night, you know, you gotta, it's gotta be clear head. I think my junior year of high school, there's some family over, my mom and his big elaborate Thanksgiving dinner, and I sit down and put like, two like baby carrots and like three almonds on my plate. I remember her just going like, okay, there's something wrong. So they had enrolled me with a personal trainer at the health club. And every time he told me to eat more food, I would eat less food. He put out this big meal plan and I, I didn't follow. That wasn't working, nothing had been working, so my mom enrolled me with a counselor. I lost like 14 pounds in a matter of like four days. Right then and there, in that room, they called an ambulance. They brought in a stretcher put me on the stretcher, and I went to the ER. I wasn't safe to myself. I didn't think anything was wrong with me. You could die. You can die. It is a psychological issue. Yes, it is physical in terms of the results that are happening to your body, how my recovery started was by straightening some things out in my head. It started for me, it all started thinking positively. Let's shift our focus away from maybe what we think we look like versus who we are as, as people. And that to me is, is the initial driving force what made me feel like I was recovering. It's been 11 years since I've been back. Today we're gonna meet with my former nutritionist that, that handled it in over uh, six months. I came down here uh, starting three times a week and then came down here two times a week. <sighs> um, it brings back some memories, but I'm not nervous. I'm just, I'm excited to be able to share this and, uh, and share the story with everybody. I mean, it's been almost 11 years now. Yes, a yeah, long time ago. Some things have changed. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what I remember is you were not happy about being here. You were resistant. I didn't want to admit there was anything wrong. And, right. You know, like many of us being perfectionists and almost overconfident in ourselves, is like, what are these people going to help me with? I already know everything I need to know. Before, I would always think, okay, beef jerky, nut, like chips, okay, I can't have that. I know there are cookies down there, that's not good for you. So I'd be focusing on the negative things that I can't have versus like now it's like I look at this and I'm like, dude, beef jerky, that's a great healthy snack to have. It makes me feel normal. I'm just a normal guy now. Ever since my story came out, I've had a, many, many, many people reach out on, on Instagram, Twitter, and me being where I'm at, I, am, I claim to be no expert eating disorders. I know enough about them, but I think my biggest thing is how can I get them to help? We have a lot of hotlines that are out there now. Mm -hmm. um, I know the National Eating Disorder Association right. has one. Maybe my story and the things that I was able to learn here will allow people to seek out help if they need it. If you're not happy with your body and you don't know any better, you, you don't think about the health. What, what's wrong, what might happen to your health. You just think of the outcome that's there. I don't care who you are, everyone has a body image issue at some point in their life, and I thought I knew a way to get it done, and I was way wrong. I think it's important to talk about these issues in a way that is gonna spread a positive light on them. The inner desire to be perfect is my best friend or is my worst enemy. I still carry that to this day, but I now use it in more healthy, positive outlets. For the longest time, I was like, you know what, if I don't get to the big leagues, I'm a failure. And finally, I got to the point where I was like, you know what, like, if I never play in the big leagues, that's fine, like, I gave it my best shot. Granite Bay, then we went to Sacramento City College, then we went to the Northwoods League, so lacrosse loggers, Long Beach State, Orleans Firebirds, Bristol White Sox, Great Falls Voyagers, Annapolis Intimidators, Winston-Salem Dash, Fort Charlotte, Stone Crabs, Montgomery Biscuits, Durham Bulls, Tacoma Rainiers, Seattle Mariners. And now I'm in the big leagues.